You can't hide. What do you do? You have to face it. Uh, head on and right through it, not around it, right through it. And he says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in that regard, by example, during the whole period, ever since he started calling people to La ilaha illallah in Mecca, some called him crazy, insane. Uh, he is a poet, shahir, kahin, a magician, sahir, name him. Not only that, that wasn't enough. They throw rocks at him, alayhi salatu wasalam. They dump the animal's guts over his head, alayhi salatu wasalam, while he was in sujood. What did he, what did he do? He says, Allah, maghfir li qawmi innahum la ya'lamu. Oh Allah, forgive my people for they do not know. They have no idea. See, the truth is hitting them in the face, yet yeah, they consider it falsehood. SubhanAllah. So there, you know, it's, it's understandable. Who historically had given that example for us to follow? He did, alayhi salatu wasalam. That's why, SubhanAllah, Ibrahim ibn Adham one time was up in the street and a soldier came to him and he says, Ayn al Amar, where is civilization? It was in some deserted area. Ayn al Amar, where is civilization? He says, right there. And he pointed him towards a cemetery. This is where the, the real Hamar is. The real people are right there. As for that town, there's nobody in there. Dead people walking. They're just walking, but they're dead people. And then this is the. So the man didn't understand that what Ibrahim ibn Adam is trying to get him to understand. You're safe with those in the cemetery, but not those. They will make you see the stars in the middle of the day. Huh? <laughs> the soldier didn't like what he said. He thought he, thought he was mocking him. Hit him in the face, uh, bled his nose, and then subhanAllah, Ibrahim ibn Adham, subhanAllah, he did something very strange. He started praying for him. He said, Allahumma maghfirullah, Allahumma arhamullah, as if he gave him sadaqah. But listen, if you are using standards of the akhirah, your things, your concepts are changing. Your perspectives are changing. The Prophet says, And that one is exclusive. He says, the, the affair of a believer is amazing. Amazing the affair of the believer. He says, should a bounty, a favor, a good thing come his way, he is grateful and thankful and that is good for him. Good in what way? Inshallah, tomorrow morning we have a detailed explanation about the, the decree, Al-Qadr. And he says, Ali Salatu Salam, wa in asabat hu the ra a sabara fakana khair al lah. Al Qadr al khir al mur. But if calamity, a test, touches him, he is patient and it is good for him. So Ibn Adham got hit in the face. Is that good? Well, it depends. Do you want to make it good or do you want to make it bad? Huh? If, if, it, if you are somebody who says Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad rasulullah any calamity that touches you flip it to work for you be patient with it why because he will expiate your sins raise you in ranks with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you more hasanat he says alayhi salatu wasalam ma min musibatin tusibu al mu'min hatta al shawkata yushabuha uh, there is no calamity that touches the, the believer, even if it is a prick, see, like a needle, uh, that pricks the individual, the pain that you get out of a needle pricking you, uh, even that one will be 
an expiation of the sins yeah? with one condition see the catch is for you to be patient with it Abraham ibn Adam he said Alhamdulillah this is bitter and it is a test but it is khayrun li this is good for me now where why did he make dua for him this is this is this is where we really need to focus on it and zero in on it it's because if you do harm allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says ya ibadi inni harramtu dhulm ala nafsi waj'altuhu baynakum haramun fala tadhalamu riwaya tadhalamu allah ta'ala says O oh my servants, I have made oppression, transgression, aggression, name them, wronging others, haram. I made that haram for myself. Huh? And I made it haram amongst you. Do not transgress against one another. Press one another. Wrong one another. Don't do that. Allah made it haram. The soldier punching Ibrahim bin Adam is a good or bad, obviously. Huh? And it is going to be recorded as a bad thing for him. He says, Ibrahim bin Adam, he says, I know that that is a test and it is good for me. And I ask Allah Ta'ala to accept sins. He granted me to be patient. Huh? So I'm looking forward for the reward. As for him, Allah, he says, I did not want his reward to be a punishment out of this equation. So Allah forgive him. Ya Salam. Wallahu yuhibbu al-muhsineen. This is the loftiness that Allah Ta'ala wants us to reach. You have al-Islam, the, the bare minimum. You have al-Iman, a little higher. And then you have the, the roof right there. And that's al-Ihsan. The Sahaba always shooting for the Ihsan. We're gonna see this inshallah in examples about the ibadat, the acts of worship. Abdullah ibn Abbas says two people I can pay back immediately but the third only Allah can pay. He says one is someone who says salamu alaykum I'll pay him back immediately in full wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh that's how I paid him back because that's his right. The minute somebody says salamu alaykum it becomes Mandatory upon you to say wa alaykum as wa rahmatullah. Give the answer and give it in full. Give it in full. Uh, don't be stingy even even to say in uh, wa alaykum as I get a lot of tests and people just say S-A. What is S-A? Huh? Is that to, you don't have enough time to say as wa alaykum wa rahmatullah? And for you to answer say wa alaykum as wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was with the Sahaba, and one of them came and he says, Assalamu alaikum. The next one comes and he says, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. And the other one says, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. And he says, 10, 20, 30. The Sahaba said, What is 10, 20, 30? He says, The first one said, Assalamu alaikum, the bare minimum. Uh, he gave 10 hasanat. The second one says, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. He added another 10, that's 20. Wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. That, 30. You want to get the 10 or the 30? Shoot for that, for the sky. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa alaikum wa salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So take your time. You want to say assalamu alaikum, insha'Allah ta'ala, even while you're texting. But don't do that while you drive though. <laughs> he says, وَرَجُلٌ وَسَّ عَلِي فِي الْمَجْلِسِ When you walk into a gathering, and it is crowded, somebody's coming in late, <coughs> open some space for him. What is he gonna say? Jazakallah khairan, you paid him right there and then. Jazakallah khairan. But he says, and this is, this is where the key, uh, the, the key uh, uh, of loftiness again. He says, but a man who had a calamity in his life, and then he spent the whole night worrying about it, could not, think of anyone to help him work it out and solve it. But he thought of me and came to me in the morning, this person I cannot pay back. 
only Allah can pay him. See? Only Allah can pay him because he, subhanAllah, where did he get this understanding? Huh? It's because when it comes to helping people eased out of their hardship, has so much reward with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Prophet sallallahu says, whoever eases a hardship, eases hardship away from somebody, Allah ta'ala will ease him out of the hardship of the day of judgment. Huh? On that land of resurrection where every little help is well needed and deserved on that, on that moment. Pay it forward, do it now. That's why he says, He said, if somebody comes to you and says, please, I need help with whatever it is. Don't think that you're doing a favor to that individual. Huh? Instead, think that there are tons of people Allah could send that person to. But instead, He chose you, selected you. For him to come that moment, that time, with that thought, with that problem to you. You are exclusively chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't think you're doing him a favor. Allah is doing you a favor. Why? Because the reward that is sitting on it is far more than you could ever do to help that person. It is a bounty, a blessing, a favor bestowed upon you from Allah. Don't look at it. That's why Hassan al Basri, whenever he, he, he is approached by somebody who, uh, a needy, he will give him money at the same time he will be kissing his head. She says, Allah khair. Huh? You gave me a chance to earn the reward from Allah. Maybe, maybe. Yeah. You're not going to make his problems go away forever. Huh? Maybe you can help him get over a hurdle. But is that, is that it? Huh? No, forget it. Ya ayyuhal insanu inna kakadifan ila rabbika kadham famulaqi. When it comes to hardship, it is the nature of this life. You overcome one, the next one is waiting. And then you'd be jumping one uh, uh, and, and, and getting ready for the next. The Prophet sallallahu in a hadith that was collected by Imam al Bukhari on the authority of Jabir ibn Abdullah. He says, alayhi salatu wasalam, رَحِبَ اللَّهُ عَبْدًا سَمْحًا إِذَا بَاعَ سَمْحًا إِذَا اشْتَرَ سَمْحًا إِذَا اقْتَضَ He says, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on a person. This is in a business transactions, in the world of business dealings. He says, may Allah grant mercy to those who in the buy, from a seller, they're easy in, their, in, in that purchase. When they sell to a customer, they're easy in that, in that transaction as well. Also easy when they borrow, and also easy when they, they pay back. This is, in the world of business, should this very simple, straightforward concept be implemented, Wallahi, we will solve so many problems. Huh? So many problems in the, in the department. Now, how is this taken and implemented by the Sahaba? The Prophet, you have in a hadith that was collected by Imam Ahmad in his Musnad. Uthman ibn Affan had a deal transaction with a man, one of the companions to where Uthman sold him a piece of property. And they agreed on the price. The man walks to get the money and come back and get his piece of property from Uthman. <laughs> the man disappears, didn't show up. Not today, not tomorrow, not the next day. For a while. And Uthman came across him. And he asked him, how come you didn't show up? I have not seen you and thought we had a deal of you wanting to purchase the land. He says, you know what happened is, after we spoke, everyone that I spoke to told me that Gobinta, Ghabn uh, is a beautiful, beautiful uh, term in Arabic. He says, everybody told me Gobinta, and I'll explain what Gobinta means. 